spinning. Sam spinning. Hello, everybody. I'm Caleb. Hello, everybody. I'm Caleb. Josh, why are you dressed like that? Caleb, why are you dressed like that? What do you mean? I'm Caleb. What do you mean? I'm Caleb. Why are you copying me? Why are you copying me? This is very juvenile, Josh. This is very juvenile of you, Caleb. Are we kids again? What are we? Kids again? I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're doing this. People are waiting for us, Josh. People are waiting for us, Caleb. I got an idea. I've got an idea. I love my wonderful Android phone. <laughs> I love my Apple phone. Oh, I'm so sorry. I knew that would I'm so it. sorry, iPhone 14 Pro Max, one terabyte edition, <laughs> deep purple, I'm so sorry. I, I couldn't do it to you. All right, guys, last week we st we spoke about the pinnacle counterfeit uh, to the Jewish people, the false prophet. And this week we're going to talk about counterfeits in the church because don't think for a second that we are exempt from Satan's deception or plans. And the sad thing is many Christians will fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. In fact, Paul was greatly concerned about uh, the church in Corinth being caught into the counterfeit situation. He said so. <laughs> Second Corinthians 11, three through four says, but I'm afraid that just as Eve was mm. deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. Ooh. Goodness Burn. gracious. I just, ugh, that's harsh, guys. Uh, does it ring any bells mm. uh, with the church today, either, you know, putting up with apostasy or accepting it? And I find it interesting what Paul said there. He's, he said, you accepting a, a different Jesus than the one we preach. What, there's two Jesuses? That doesn't I mean, even make sense. There's more than one Jesus in this world? And we'll get into that. <laughs> First, we gotta talk about 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Mm. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So I wish it were as cut and dry as that sometimes. You, come on guys, say Jesus is Lord and you come try on. to trip some false prophet up. You but can do it. It doesn't happen that way sometimes. As Paul says, that some people could preach in the name of Jesus. They're giving you some doctrine but they are intending a different Jesus in their mind. There's just like there's lots of people named Jesus today, lots of Jesus yeah. going around. I mean, it's a Jesus that lives over by my house. Exactly. So that's a common name. And when people like witches and false prophets and apostles, they go into the church, they have no problem preaching to you in the name of Jesus because there's a different Jesus that they're giving the gospel to. Now, I know this may startle or offend some people, but Satan has assigned in nearly every church a false apostle, a false prophet, an Ahab, a Jezebel, someone to stay and sit in those seats for the long haul, biding their time. And they're watching, they're waning, gaining the trust of the people in the congregation, gaining the trust of the leadership and the elders, even becoming one on the pastoral leadership. And all they're doing is sowing seeds of destruction and waiting for their harvest. Second Peter 2, one through three says, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will securely bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring onto themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. That's crazy. I'll say this, yeah. this is not a new concept that I've heard. Yeah. This is something that I was raised to understand. Mm -hmm. And one of the saddest things and scariest things about it is it's one of the most offensive premises I found in the modern church. Mm. And I think that that's because most people are actually scared and insecure about the idea that maybe they have befriended, entertained, or listened to somebody who could have possibly been a plant. Yeah. My, be my best advice before we get into all the details mm. and everything else here is drop your pride. It's going to be way easier in the long run if you just realize you probably got snowed. That's right. And, and, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to give you understanding because this will literally destroy everything you, you care about. That's right. And so some people may be asking, how does Satan do this? How does he counterfeit and bring in these destu destructive doctrines? And he does it very simply by altering or changing the truth just a little bit at a time. 
uh, making it more palatable to the senses, to the emotions, something that feeds the flesh so that the masses want to accept it. It's not some gospel that makes them feel bad. You know, you're a sinner. He, he just changes it ever so slightly so people want to accept it and, and just kind of changes it more and more and more and more and more till it's way off the, the path of truth and righteousness. A good con artist doesn't reveal his plan at the beginning. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> jump in with a massive, ha ha, did That's you right. see the red tail and the horns? I'm awesome. No, it is, it is through the small minutiae the shifts yeah. over time because we become complacent mm -hmm. and we slowly um, accept what we hear. Yeah. 2 Peter 2, 18 to 21 says, mm -hmm. for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, mm -hmm. they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. When they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. Mm -hmm. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. That's true, Josh. That doesn't necessarily mean he's talking about, you know, like the extreme sinners, the prostitutes, the drug addicts, the alcoholics that came to faith and then fell off the bandwagon. That could be any sinner, any one of you who didn't know the Lord. You came to know him and then you're caught up in some false doctrine and you get into the worldly things again. And he says your end is more destructive the judgment against you for having known the truth. And that is so much harder for you to come back to the truth than those who had never known the truth to begin with. Oops, a daisy. Mm. Second Timothy 4, three through four says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth to be turned aside to fables. So guys, sometimes the counterfeits in the church don't even know they're counterfeits. They don't even know their pawns. That was going to be my question, is if everyone <laughs> yeah. that is the bad guy knows of the bad guy. A lot of them do, but a lot of them do not. They are just pawns being used by Satan to try to get to someone who is actually a threat to him, who actually has the anointing and the power of God. And they're, they're like, uh, they're expendable to Satan. He can't take you on just head on. He really can't. He has to uh, attach himself to somebody and, and be that front to come at you. Like a dirty and, leech. Like a kamikaze bomber. He'll use them to strike at oh. people, to try to weaken them over time, like a spiritual parasite to drain yeah. that energy and that life force to weaken the strong so that then he can take them on. And, and it happens slowly over time, but it's, it's far destructive. Um, most Christians are so self-consumed and deluded, they have no idea that they're being used as a pawn for the enemy. And, and these people that are uh, counterfeits, they'll be speaking these destructive words and gossiping and all this stuff. And life is in their tongue, death and life, the power to speak that. And they'll be taking down someone and they don't know that that's their whole purpose for doing it, you know. Acts 20, hmm. Acts 20, 20, 28 through 30 says, therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased by his own blood. For I know this after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. And, and I've seen this a lot of times before Josh. Delilah's. There's Delilah's and Jezebel's, Jezebel's these people that pop up and, um, they at first appear to want to learn and grow, and they idolize this pastor of this person in authority. And they stroke their ego, and slowly over time, pride will set into that leader. And the devil has his opening, and that person will eventually fall into sin. And it'll be exposed to the whole church and the whole world, and everybody will look at him saying, look, I knew he wasn't authentic. I knew he was secretly a sinner and all this, when really what we should be doing is praying for the man. And the hard, the hard part is that a lot of times, the person didn't know that this was happening. Yes. And there's a lot of times that the person mm -hmm. will actually receive um, advice from trusted people and from family members, yeah. and they'll actually turn away from the advice that they should accept, that yeah. they would normally accept, and they will side with that counterpart. And that's usually, if you're looking for signs, because I like to make things very uh, tangible yeah. and, and applicable things you can do. Mm -hmm. If you are in question and you are looking for ways to discern whether or not somebody is a counterfeit or whatnot, mm -hmm. look for people who would literally 
literally turn their back on family members. They would turn their back on the people that they've trusted their whole lives mm. to defend this individual who's just come around. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Now they'll do it with great intention of heart. They'll mm -hmm. speak on behalf of this person. This person doesn't have anything else. This person is totally innocent. This person is here for us. It's our job to, to defend them and do this. Yeah. But when you look at the way that God set things up, that's, God doesn't ask you to turn your back on, on all the people you've ever trusted, to turn your back on your family and all this stuff just for the new person. Well, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Man, unfortunately, how have we have seen this? I'm sure many of you have seen this in the church today. You've gotten a taste for the counterfeit. There's a lot going around today. And Josh, you and I, we've had the taste of the authentic growing up. We've seen the true power of God. It's hard to describe this, and I don't describe this from any position of haughtiness because mm -hmm. it's not because of anything special. I'm very yes. blessed, that, uh, and I tell people this all the time, that I was raised from the time I was born mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to be in God's presence. Okay. I was in meetings where God showed up. I saw yeah. all the things that we're supposed to have faith for with my own eyes. Right. So it's not even really that I had faith beyond other people's faith. It was actually something I saw physically. Yes. I was blessed to be able to do that. And so one thing I will promise you this, when you have experienced the true presence of God, when you have seen the true miraculous happen, when you've heard His voice, mm -hmm. it is incredibly easy to discern immediately mm -hmm. right off the bat what isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, as we've heard before, uh, those who work in, um, in banking and financing, they are taught to study the, the actual real dollar bill, not the counterfeit, because counterfeits right. come in too many variants. That's right. And so they study what is real, mm -hmm. and when anything is presented to them that isn't real, it is immediately discernible to them. That's right. So what we're saying in the church today yes. that's so sad is that it's so easy to get caught up in movements. Yes. You know, this group becomes popular because they have a hit song that hits iTunes. It's a worship song, and I feel so good when I hear it. <laughs> this person is a very dynamic speaker, and when he speaks, I feel like he's speaking just to me. Mm -hmm. All of these descriptions that we hear most of the time are emotional responses to this. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit moves on your heart, it's not through emotions. Emotions may be a byproduct right. of something that happens, yes. but the change that happens in the spiritual is completely different. That's right. And so we're asking you to look beyond your flesh, which we know dominates your physical body here, yeah. <laughs> and to look beyond that and to, and to press in. And you say, how do I know? Because the things that God is speaking and doing lines up with His Word. That's right. You can judge it by His Word. But the things that are just temporary of the flesh may seem like they do, mm -hmm. but they do not stand the test of time. That's right. um, you think it's ridiculous, I get it. But Paul says um, that this is the nature of what Satan does. Second Corinthians yes. 11, 13 through 15 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, wow. whose end will be according to their works. Yeah, anybody who's read Revelation 2 and 3, uh, where Yeshua gives a message to the seven churches in Asia, uh, that is a prophetic message for their time and for our time as well. And he doesn't have very nice things to say for six of those churches. One of the churches, Philadelphia, he has good things to say. Six, he has uh, a reprimand for them. And so if you look at the churches that are around today and you look at those odds, six out of seven are disobeying and falling after some apostate, you know, doctrine. Those are not good odds, guys, but there is hope. There is hope. I'm sorry, we've been scaring you. There is hope. There's hope in Yeshua. There's hope in the authentic and getting to know your Messiah and really uh, uh, seeking the Lord so you're not caught away by all these false doctrines and things that come. Matthew 7, 15 through 20 says, mm -hmm. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes uh, from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, mm -hmm. but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. That's right, Josh. Um, the bad fruit, you see that when people are glorying themselves, they're trying to get the focus on them instead right. of focusing on God. Uh, they're trying to get you, your focus away from God. Uh, and, and all those different pointers that we read, denying the Godhead, denying the Son, not teaching sound, uh, sound doctrine. You see the rise of this self-help, you know, motivational speaker doctrine. Become the better you. Anytime you're focusing on you, you're not going to be set free. You're not going to be delivered. You cannot make yourself better. Correct. Because you have a flawed flesh. Only Yeshua can make you better by seeking Him. 
instead of seeking all the other things. And so how do we change that? And, and yeah. what's the difference? Get to know the Savior better. That's right. Get to know Yeshua. Mm -hmm. This is what it all boils down to. Uh, th there's nothing here with um, any kind of uh, religious um, uh, rules that we're trying to throw in, we're saying get to know Yeshua better. Uh, yeah. Psalms 119, 2-3 says, Blessed are those who keep His statutes and seek Him with all their heart. They do no wrong but follow His ways. Deuteronomy 4:29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find Him if you seek Him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. John 14, 15-17, If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and he will be in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. So I just want to reiterate, we've used words like extreme sin. We've thrown different things out there. Sin is sin. Anything out there that is trying to take your focus away from the father is counterfeit. That's right. Anything that is trying to get you to look left when you should look right is counterfeit. Stop defending the counterfeit. You are not defending that person by standing up for them. You are neglecting the Father. It's as simple as that. We put our eyes and focus on Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith, and when we do so, He, the real Father, who loves that person who may or may not be counterfeit even more than you do, He will protect them and defend them. That's not your job. Your job is to keep your eyes on them. So we both challenge you and support you and love you and say, guys, we're in it together. Let's do what's right. And join us next time. I'm the only Caleb, just so you know. Mom, this is what it would have been like had we shared the same zygote. <laughs> Twins would have been terrible. Very awkward. <laughs> Over 40 years of that at the same time.